Today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow options can make by selling put and cover call options as well as doing credit spreads. I know some of you like the wheel strategy. Well, our trading techniques have taken the wheel strategy and made some upgrades to help improve our returns and cash flow. In this video, I'll show you every trade we did last month in December and talk through three option trades that I think you can learn something from. One of those trades went really good. One has gone really bad, and one of them is a credit spread that we did in a strong, stable, mature company that's paying us an awesome return, even though it's 14% out of the money. This will help you sell. You can use these same ops trading techniques to consistently generate monthly cash flow in your account. Here you see every ops trade we did last month in December. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. I will talk to the bullish put credit spread we did in Amazon that paid us a 34.6% annualized return on capital even though the short put option is over 14% out of the money. I will also talk to our trades in position in Clorox. This is a position that overall it's gone against us in a really big way. But I'll show you how we are consistently generating cash flow and lowering our cost bases even though the short put option went against us. Finally, I'll talk through a cash secured put position that we're in in the real estate company, National Retail Properties. I'll show you why this trade did so well for us so you can learn from it and use this information to help you make better option trading decisions. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, you see that as a result of selling options, we put a net of $13,441 cash into our pocket. In the orange box, you see that trading commission cost us $61.47. At the bottom left in the purple box, you see that market data costs us $32.75. At the bottom right in the green box, so we actually collected just over $1,065 in dividends from the seven covered call option positions that we are in. And let me tell you, that was the easiest $1,000 I made last month. In all, as a result of buying and selling options, as well as collecting some dividends, we put a net of $14,412.58 into our pocket. If you annualize that return on the approximately $1 million in capital that we had at risk, it equates to right at a 17% annualized non-leverage return on capital. If you're curious about what the return on the $164,749 margin requirement was, if you don't add in the margin for the short calls that we sold in the S&P 500, it equates to a 103% annualized return on margin. I won't go into great detail about it, but I do want to share with you one reason why our return was a little bit lower this month. The reason is that we actually bought our portfolio $400,000 worth of insurance, as you can see in the purple box. We did that by buying a put option in SPX, just in case the market turns down in the month of January. We're mostly going to give it a week or so in January, and if the market remains stable, I'm going to close that protective put option out and just pocket whatever cash we can get for it. Based on the poll that you guys took, you want to see some trades that have gone against us and how we're handling them. So stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will share with you a trade that's gone against us in a really big way in Clorox. The first trade I want to talk through with you is one of the highest returning trades that we did last month. It's in the real estate company, National Retail. Let me share with you why we did this trade, why it turned out so well for us, so you can use the same knowledge to make better option trades for yourself. Here you see the daily and weekly chart of National Retail on the day that we sold these put options. As you can see on the left daily chart, National Retail had recently broke out above the red 200 moving average. It also seemed to be finding decent support at the green 50 moving average with the exception of a few down days in which it broke through it, but then it bounced back up above it. Also down in the volume section over the previous couple of weeks, I noticed that there had been really nice buying pressure at National Retail. On the 26th after lunchtime, I took advantage of this nice strong down day to sell two cash secure put option contracts in National Retail. As you can see here, it paid us 80 cents per share. The next trading day on the 29th, National Retail was still finding nice support at this red 200 moving average. So I sold two more cash secured puts and this time we received 70 cents per share. Now you're looking at the weekly chart of National Retail. A couple more reasons why I felt comfortable doing this trade is because as you can see towards the far right during 2021, National Retail had been finding nice support at the red 200 moving average. In September, when it briefly penetrated the red 200 moving average, I noticed that it quickly rebounded back above that moving average. I also know that this is a very strong company. With the new strand of virus coming out, I thought that the prices were a little bit beaten down for really no good reason. Because of that, I felt comfortable selling these put options. Well, how did it turn out? 
We have now fast forwarded to the third Friday of December, December 17th, which is Opsin Expiration Day. As you can see, National Retail did briefly decline for several days down to as low as $43, but then it rebounded and went right back like it normally does and found support at the red 200 moving average. On expiration day, it was looking like it was going to stay above $45, so we just let those cash secure puts expire worthless. Notice that on that same day, realizing that the December puts were going to expire worthless, we took advantage of it still hanging around that $45 per share area to sell some third Friday of January cash secured put options. Four days later, after national retail had declined but bounced right back up above our $45 strike price, we sold three additional contracts. We'll have to wait and see how this position turns out later this month. In all, by knowing how national retail tends to respond around its moving averages and having confidence that it is a strong, stable, mature, well-run company, we took advantage of a momentary price decline to pocket some really nice cash. Before I get to the position that's going against us in a really big way in Clorox, the next trade I want to talk through is in a company that I'm sure all of you have heard of, and that's Amazon. I don't do credit spreads very often. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know the main reason is that they can be very challenging to fix if they go against you. But in a very expensive stock like Amazon, I'm willing to do a credit spread and see the odds are stacked in our favor and we're paid an awesome return. Let me show you what I saw, why I entered this trade, and the return that this credit spread is paying us. Here you see what I saw on the day that we sold this bullish put credit spread at Amazon. Notice that over the previous month or so, at the purple arrow, the Amazon had declined down to right at the red tuna moving average, which was at 33.50. It had been at that support for about three days. I noticed that over the previous year or so, this 200 moving average has served as nice support for Amazon. On the four occasions that it broke through the red 200 moving average, within several days, it was right back above it. Here I found Amazon right back at this red 200 moving average with a nice, big, strong down day. It doesn't always work out for us. By generally speaking, I prefer to sell put options on nice down days. The bigger the down day, the better because we get paid more. However, I like a stock to be approaching an area where it's previously found support at. Because of this, I felt comfortable selling the $2,900 put option and buying a protective put option at $2,600. With Amazon trading around $3,400, we'll have to drop $500 per share or almost 15% in order for our short put option to be challenged. Switching over to the weekly chart, notice that in order for the $2,900 put option to be challenged, it would also have to break through four previous areas of support. Now, is it possible that it crashes down below $2,900? Absolutely. But the odds in our favor that it won't? I feel like they are. But just in case, we bought the $2,600 put option to cap our potential losses. We're still in this trade. As you can see here, we still have 19 days until these options expire. But so far, it's looking good. As you can see, we sold the January 21st $2,900 put option for $15.15 .15 per share. Simultaneously, we bought the January 21st $2,600 put option for $4.91 per share. So we're able to put into our pocket a net of $10.24 per share minus commission. If we annualize that return, it equates to a 34.6% annualized return on capital. Now, the story is still being written about this trade because we still have several more weeks until it expires. But so far, it's looking pretty good. We could close this position out for $2.53 per share, but I like to give it a little bit longer because we still are so far out of the money in this position. I believe that when you're trading options, you need to always have a plan about what you're going to do if a position moves against you. Our plan is that if Amazon were to come down and challenge our $2,900 put option, we would either roll the position down and out in time or turn this into a poor man's covered call. I'll let you know how this trade turns out in next month's video. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Based on your response to our poll, I'm now going to share with you one of our positions that's gone against us in a big way. I'm going to show you where the position currently stands, what we've been doing to try and improve this position, and I'll also talk you through the trades that we did in December, as well as the thinking behind those trades. Here are the details of our Clorox position that's gone bad on us. Here you see every trade we've done in Clorox since we started trading this position back in April of 2021. Notice that even though this position has gone against us, we have still been able to pocket just over $1,278. The reason why I wanted to share this position with you is because back in April of 2021, we began selling the 190 put option in Clorox. The chart looked pretty good as you can see here. Where the white arrow is, that's when we sold our 190 put option. Yes, Clorox had been in a strong decline on the daily chart. However, it had recently made a higher high and a higher low. Also notice down the volume section, there have been really nice buying pressure over the past week, and that pressure appeared to be increasing. 
Another reason is that as you can see here, for the previous two months, this area of 190, it has served as resistance for Clorox. But then it broke through that resistance, and over the past month, the 190 area had been serving as support for it. Because of that, I felt comfortable selling the out of the money 190 put option. I felt pretty comfortable that if Clorox did come down, this area of 190 would again serve as support for it. Well, sometimes the best laid plans don't turn out for the best. I've now fast forwarded the chart to November 1st. At the left of the arrow, that's where we began selling put options to Clorox. As you can see, it's a trade that is not cooperating with us. I still like the company. I just don't like the chart action. Because it's gone against us, we've done several things to collect nice cash flow on Clorox while I waited for it to stabilize and hopefully rebound. Going back to our trades here, see that we've done two things to improve our cash flow and decrease our call spaces in Clorox. First, at the top two purple arrows, see that we rolled the put option strike price down from 190 to 185. Since then, we've just been rolling that deep in the money 185 put option out in time. Meanwhile, beginning in August, as you can see where the blue arrows are, we started selling call options against this position. Notice that once Clorox began to show some strength, instead of selling naked call options against it, we've actually been doing a bearish call credit spread because we've been buying some protection, as you can see in the green boxes, by buying the 210 call option, just in case Clorox were to have a big jump in price. It's never fun when a position goes against you, but as you can see, you can turn a very bad position into a cash flow machine. Now, I'm not suggesting that you sell naked call options against all of your deep in the money put options. You have to analyze each position individually and make a well thought out, educated decision. But my thinking here is that Clorox is a strong, stable, high demand company that's not going away anytime soon. Just because the charts are down, it doesn't mean that it's a bad company. I just need to figure out a safe way, in my opinion, to generate cash flow while I wait on Clorox to come back up in price. So that's what we've been doing. No, the return is not phenomenal, but it has still generated some nice cash flow for us while we waited on it to come back. On top of that, as you can see here in today's updated chart, Clorox appears to have switched in direction from a downtrend back into an uptrend on the daily chart. It's making higher highs and higher lows. It recently broke through the red 200 moving average and briefly challenged our short 180 call option that expires in January. I'm prepared to either roll that 180 call option up and out or close it out if given the opportunity for next to nothing. I'm still not 100% convinced that Clorox is going to switch over to a permanent uptrend, but so far it's looking pretty good. In the meantime, we'll continue to sell put options and possibly call options against this position to generate great cash flow. What's interesting is that even though this position has gone against us in a big way, if it were assigned to us today at the $185 put option strike price, since we collected $1,278 in it, or $12.78 per share, would actually be up in this position because our call spaces would be at $172.22 per share. You just have to love option trading. If you'd like to get an alert and send me to trade similar to the three I spoke about in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down in the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more of the tips and tricks that we use to fix put and cover call positions that have gone against us, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled, How to Fix a Losing Option Trade. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.